evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Barrett Kennecke, and I'm a biologist with Texas Parks and Wildlife. Uh, this evening, we're going to be talking about how to do a spotlight count for deer. Um, a lot of folks will, will do different kinds of surveys. Um, there's a variety of them out there, helicopter, the spotlight, camera surveys, um, stand counts. Uh, but in particular, we're going to be talking about spotlight surveys tonight. Um, and the reason for that is um, it's, it's one of the easier ones. Um, all of the surveys have their pros and cons. You know, some are expensive, some are uh, labor intensive. The spotlight survey is pretty easy. Um, typically, uh, in, a, in a general survey, uh, you're going to have one driver and two observers. Um, so if you can find two of your buddies to, to, to ride with you, um, then you've pretty well got it made. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do whenever you're, you're going to set up a, a spotlight survey is you got to figure out where you're going to go, right? Uh, we need to find a, a route on the ranch. Um, if you can lay out a route that's on an all-weather road, something that even when it gets, gets muddy, you can still going to be able to drive that. Um, a road that's not going to be covered up in water, uh, something like that. And we're going to want to repeat the same route year after year for uh, uh, better data. That way we can look long term, survey after survey, we're getting the same, uh, the same survey, getting good results there. Um, so on that route that you're going to set up, we also want to avoid a couple things. We want to avoid food plots, deer feeders, protein feeders, anything that uh, man made that's going to artificially attract deer to it and change your numbers. You don't want to go out there and uh, survey a big wheat field and count uh, 50 or 100 extra deer out there that you don't really have. Uh, so we want to we want to be able to count deer that are hanging out on your place uh, probably year round uh, and that's going to give us our, our best estimate there. Um, the next thing you're going to want to do is uh, have some kind of setup. Uh, so I strongly discourage trying to do a spotlight count using a mule or UTV. Um, they're great if that's the only thing you have that's fine. Uh, but the problem with that is a lot of times you're not going to be able to see very good out of those. They sit a little lower to the ground. Uh, your visibility is going to be uh, restricted, especially in years that we have good green vegetation. Got a lot of rain. Everything's grown up. Um, so if, if you have something like a pickup or I've seen people use Jeeps, um, South Texas, uh, a lot of those guys will use those high racks, uh, specially built things on the bed of the trucks and they can sit really high. Uh, they can see quite a bit out of those. Um, so if you can, uh, with your buddies, you know, scrounge something together. If you're really serious about doing a spotlight survey, I would recommend investing a little bit of money, uh, getting some kind of little rack, something that you can use year after year. Um, so, all right, we got our we got our equipment, we got our survey laid out. Now it's time to go do the survey, right? Uh, we're gonna start half hour, maybe uh, maybe about an hour after dark. Um, give give the light nice uh, time to go down and we're gonna be using spotlights. So like I alluded to earlier, uh, we need one guy driving and then on the back of that pickup, uh, whether they're sitting on the toolbox or they have an actual rack built, we have one guy looking to the left and to the right. Um, <laughs> thanks, Gary. <laughs> Uh, so when we, we go to have that set up, we have one guy looking to the left and one guy looking to the right, uh, searching for deer as we go along. We don't want to go more than uh, about 15 miles per hour max. Uh, depends on what kind of road you're driving on. Obviously, if you've got a bunch of potholes, a really rough road, you're just going to be crawling along for the safety of those guys in the back. Um, whenever we do spot a deer, uh, the driver is going to stop. Uh, the two guys in the back are going to use binoculars and a rangefinder. Uh, try to get, try to identify whether that's a buck, doe, or fawn. Um, some, pe some people take extra data and they want to try to determine was that a young buck or a mature or middle-aged buck, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, just don't have really high expectations. A lot of times you'll see a deer and he takes off, and all you can say was, well, I think it was a buck, but I don't really know. Um, so uh, whenever we record that data, we're also going to have a column for unidentified deer. And that's perfectly fine. We'll take that into account and, uh, and run the numbers that way. Uh, 
Uh, so whenever we're going along, the very first time we want to do a spotlight survey, uh, we want to know how much of the area are we actually surveying. You can't just go out, drive around your place, count some deer and say, yeah, great, I've got 25 deer. That doesn't mean anything. You don't know how many deer per acre or acres per deer. Uh, and so as we're going along, we want to stop every tenth of a mile. We want to stop, take a look to the left, take a look to the right, uh, use that range finder and, and shine that, that spotlight in there. Tell me, how far can you see with the spotlight into the brush? So this is a good example that we have here. Uh, we've got thicker brush uh, off to the left, and then we've got a, a big giant hole, a little corridor with brush here. Uh, as you're going along to make everything even and random, uh, wherever the driver stops, you want to look exactly parallel from the truck. So if we stopped here a little bit behind us, the range is only going to be the trees here. If we stop just a little bit further, now all of a sudden the range is going to be way down there at that big tree past our deer. Um, and the reason for that is we want to randomize the sample. We don't want the driver picking and choosing where we stop. Uh, we don't want them intentionally looking for those big open areas to try to get a lot of yardage. Um, we try to keep it random. So, like I said, we're stopping every tenth of a mile, taking a range to the left and to the right. Um, and then we're also uh, going to take that, that data at the end and come up with an average width that we can see with the spotlight and then multiply that by how long our route is, whether that's one mile, three miles, 15 miles, etc. And that's gonna come up with a rough acreage. Now we can say, all right, now we saw 25 deer over a certain amount of acreage that we surveyed. Then you can do a little bit more math and extrapolate that to the entire, uh, the entire size of your ranch and come up with a rough deer estimate. Um, so that's kind of what the goal is here. Um, for, for folks that have uh, on smaller side of places, you know, maybe a couple hundred acres, 300, um, you don't have to drive five miles worth of roads. Uh, just focus on trying to do a general loop through the property, maybe touching on some of the habitats, all the different habitats that you have. Um, if you've got a huge place that's, you know, 30,000 acres, 50,000, whatever, um, it's very easy to get a lot of miles on roads out there uh, for the sake of time. Uh, so that way you're not surveying till four o'clock in the morning. You may want to limit that down to, you know, maybe a maximum of 15 to 20 miles. You don't want to do much more than that. Otherwise you're going to spend all night out there. Um, but uh, the, the mileage is not that big a deal. Uh, again, the, the randomness of our, our samples, the distance off of the road to the brush, uh, that averages everything out and it, it all comes out in the math. Um, so now we're going to do a, a quick little demonstration of, of what we do as the driver's going along and we see a deer, uh, this is what's going to happen. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and pan over here to the side and we're going to show our, our demonstration for our guys. Um, so they're, they're rolling along right now and uh, they just saw a deer. So they, they tapped on the, the toolbox and, and had the, the guy stop, the driver stop, and he's looking off to the side now at our, at our deer. And so, all right, we, Gary's looking through the binoculars and we're, we're trying to figure out, all right, is that, a, is that a buck, is that a doe, or is it a fawn, and how many of them are there? All right, and uh, as they're looking, okay, they identified this is gonna be a doe. Um, so now, uh, and uh, so as they're they're looking at real deer actually now we're getting a little distracted Seriously. but that's all right we, we like seeing real deer out here so um, now they're gonna uh, somebody in the back is gonna be a designated data recorder so we saw our, our one doe out there and he's gonna record on that and say all right we one saw buck. one doe uh, one buck one one buck uh, some of the folks that do these surveys uh, they're gonna want to know want to take a lot of data. Sometimes they're going to want to include a GPS point with that. Uh, for our setup here, we're not going to do that, but uh, if you'd like to do that, that way you can go home and see where everything is out there, where all your deer are spread out across the, the pasture, that's great. Go ahead and do it. Um, and that's pretty much it. Once they, uh, once they uh, record that deer, we're pretty well done. Um, and uh, I'm sorry, I want to 
pan back over to the truck real quick. Uh, sorry for that. Um, I just wanted to, to show a little bit of close up of some of our equipment here. Um, like I said, I work for Texas Parks and Wildlife uh, and what we've got here is a typical setup for what we use whenever we do spotlight surveys on our, on our routes, on our county roads. Um, so like I alluded to earlier, we've just got a simple setup. It's a rack, you know, built on the, the bed rails of the truck there. Uh, now you'll notice how high these guys are sitting. Um, what we've learned over time, and again, I alluded to that, the higher you can sit safely, the more you can sit. Uh, I'm sorry, the more that you can see. Uh, the more vegetation that's grown up in the year, uh, say you've got Johnson grass that's, that's this high, now all of a sudden, Matthew here, he can look down and everything, he can see all the, all the little fawns running around, he can see everything that's moving out there. Uh, so that benefits him greatly. Um, another little feature that we've added uh, is gonna be the, the adding an, uh, a plug in the bed of the truck. So that way we don't have to re stretch those spotlights all the way to the front of the truck, in the cab, or trying to connect them to the battery. Um, a lot of your spotlights that you're gonna buy, if they have a cord, they don't have a long enough cord to reach from the bed of the truck into the cab. Uh, so this is just one of the ways that we've kind of cheated the system per se and, and uh, made our own extension cord. Um, but uh, that's pretty well the setup. Um, if you guys have any other questions, uh, please uh, add those onto the to the video at the bottom, and and uh, hopefully we can get you an answer for that. And uh, that's all we have for this evening. So I appreciate you guys tuning in, and hope you have a good evening. The bird. All right, folks. Uh, today's or tonight's code word is going to be lumen. All right, the code word is lumen. And here's Matt with a little bit of extra stuff for us. Okay, just a quick blurb the link to the uh, Google Drive file that you virtual cadets will be getting also has in there if you go into the documents uh, it has these blank uh, spotlight survey forms for the kind of deer and for a distance sighting so if y'all are interested in trying to do something like this on your own you you'll have these forms available for you thanks